Sanjeevan, I am Jitendra Singh Bhaiya. I welcome you to read my story where I interview authors, speakers, coaches, celebrities, entrepreneurs and more. Today I have with me Dr. Paulami Ghosh Naeem. She is a life and a business coach. She is a change catalyst, a devotee of social conduct. She has a close to 22 years of experience in human resource leadership development and her expertise lies in human relations learning cultural uh, cultural change leadership inter- uh, interventions talent management and organizational development she has a dual masters in psychology and english literature with a degree in criminal law she has uh, been practicing reiki for a decade now she is a strong believer of six p's in life uh, passion perseverance perfection planning performance and patience today she will be discussing with us about her life journey. So let us hear from her. Welcome, Dr. Polomi. The platform is open and now over to you. Thank you, Jitra. Thank you, Jitra. Thank you for a wonderful opening there. Um, I'm, I'm sure we can, uh, you know, uh, we can speak a lot about what I have achieved so far. Uh, I think it's a very small achievement. I am yet to still get there, but uh, I have done something in my life which I'm, uh, you know, a few things that I'm very proud of. Few things I really still have to achieve. And uh, thank you for this platform, Jitendra. I mean, it has been a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, a wonderful feeling that you actually had me today. So yes, you can shoot now. Sure. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'd like to know about you as a person. What are the things in your life which uh, has affected uh, you to become like what you wanted to be or what you became in your life? Um, I belong to a very, uh, very, very conservative middle class family, uh, born Bengali uh, from Hyderabad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, life has been definitely roller coaster. And uh, it has definitely not been the bed of roses, you know, with the rose. It says right. if you want the ability to also enjoy the thorns that come along with it, right? So I think a very simple, uh, very simple uh, middle class family, uh, you know, uh, being a very obedient student uh, throughout my life. Being, a, okay. I, I hope I was an obedient child to my uh, parents. Yeah. I hope uh, I'm the only girl for them. So mm-hmm. a little pampered, but I hope that uh, I was able to follow uh, the guidelines and uh, you know uh, the regulations that they set for me. Definitely, they have set examples for me. Uh, they led right. by examples. Mm. Uh, they walk the talk, and that's where I learned. Uh, right. Honestly, if you ask me what I wanted to be and what I am today, I wanted to be a doctor always. <laughs> that okay. was the dream. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, I was. I realized at a certain point that I was very, very scared of uh, blood. So okay. obviously, you know, being uh, being a doctor and you getting scared of blood is not something that will work out. Right, and then I chose to be. Um, then I chose to be a psychologist. You know, that's where I, I thought you know uh, I would interact with people. I learn in the process of uh, you know coaching and counseling, and that's where I am today. So uh, a little bit of uh, match uh, between what I wanted to be and what I am today. Mm-hmm. Though I don't regret anything, I'm happy what I am today. Right, that is uh, more important. Like whatever you do, you should do yes. uh, that with all your heart. Yes. Wonderful. So if I talk about your passion in your life, uh, what would that be? What are the things you are passionate about? Uh, I'm, pa- I'm, I'm passionate about what I do. I mean, there is nothing specific I would say. Whatever I take up, you know, it could be... Uh, so I've been a coach, I have been a counsellor. Uh, for a short while, I had uh, worked for All India Radio on a part-time uh, contract. So anything that I did, I always picked it up with passion, you know, anything. I mean, whether I do, whether I talk to people, whether I present myself, I do a training session or I do a recruitment, I do an interview, whatever. So whatever I do, I do it with a lot of passion. So I would not say that I have anything in specific. So my passion is whatever you do, give your wholehearted, you know, complete dedication to that specific task. Right, right. That's what I would Right, that is really important. So, uh, if I talk about your work and experiences, how uh, that goes, like where you started, what all you did in your life? Uh, I started long back, it's been a little over two decades and uh, I had always like, as I mentioned, you know, I, I always love to interact with people, talk to people and that's where I think the human resources 
thing that helped me a lot throughout my uh, professional journey and uh, i've been in human resources for over these years and that's where i started i started right. from recruitment uh, from interviewing people to you know coming to uh, the lnd part of it because you know lnd is also a part of human resources Perfect. i i did talent development i did talent management then i moved on to leadership coaching and then then i moved to organization development so it's like Wonderful. a step by step process and the journey that i had taken so right. far mm-hmm. that's where i started This and that's what have, i enjoy a wonderful so this means you have worked on uh, almost all the uh, job roles of hr absolutely i enjoy all the gamuts of hr uh, everything has a new learning and everything is a new process so i enjoy every gamut of it. wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, if I talk about uh, the most important life lessons or learnings in your life, what are those? And uh, from personal and professional uh, experience, both. Uh, so, definitely, I think for everybody, you know, start, you know, whether it's you or me, I think for everyone, uh, your personal coachings and the personal learnings are the first ones because your right. your mother is the best teacher in the world. so you learn most of the things at home so i learned a lot of things because um, my mother was very uh, was a very very different person and very you know determined and strong confident woman herself uh, so i learned one thing from my dad was being humble so right. being humble and uh, what he taught me is i i should be carrying humility to my graveyard and i hope i'm following right. his teachings uh, and my mother taught me that you know whatever you do unless you you do a blunder or a mistake you always keep your head high so there is nothing right. to feel shame about it so even right. if you fail mm-hmm. you should not worry from trying so i learned right. this you know this were like very very strong lessons that i had learned from my life mm-hmm. and uh, the other thing i learned from my maternal aunt was never stop in life whatever right. whatever happens mm-hmm. you right. will definitely go there and never stop so i think these three things from these three different people in my life who have a great impact I learned these three lessons in life, and that's also helped me in my uh, professional life. You know, these yes, learnings I carry. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a straight impact from the personal life to the professional life. So that transition, right. transformation, everything happened from there. Yeah, these are really important in personal and professional life. Both. Yes, yes. Wonderful. And I was very, very, uh, very fortunate that I got very good bosses in my life who taught me uh, a lot of things. I mean, I would say. I had three bosses in my three, you know, three organizations that I right, worked for, right. and the three of them had a different perspective about a career and a professional life. Wonderful. So they actually motivated me a lot. So you know, right. I I would say two decades back, of course, I was a teenager and I was a I was having a carefree thought, but it was my first manager and first boss who taught me that, who told me that, you know, there is definitely a fire in you. So you should not stop right. in what you're doing. I mean, you should be different. Right. Why should Definitely. you be in the crowd? You should stand out in the crowd. You know, somebody right. special. So, you right. know, somebody should remember. Okay, this is Paulmi, right? She knows how to do this. So, right. I, I think these kind of learnings are very important, and you should be very fortunate enough to this kind to get this kind of guides and mentors in your life. So right. That helped me a lot. Right. But that really helps. Definitely. Yes. Yes. So, uh, what are the uh, like your vision, mission, and goal for uh, next? Uh, maybe five to ten years from now. I, um, you know, what I want to achieve in life, uh, I, I, I haven't been able to achieve yet. I want to make, uh, you know, make something which is like, you know, a, a name name for a task or a work that I do or a project that I do that people would resonate, that people right. will feel or people will remember and recollect my name with that mm-hmm. particular task. People would say that okay, this is what Valami has contributed for this. Um, right. I don't want to be famous. but i definitely want to be uh, recognized as a person who was able to contribute which has a great impact on people's lives Wonderful. that's where i want to achieve. you know that could take me 5 years 10 years okay before i die i would want to achieve it that's my goal now if you ask me if i have a smart goal for that i definitely have a smart goal now i want to achieve it in the next 5 years so mm-hmm. this is 2022 by 2027 people should be able to say that okay this is what she has done for this particular Field. Right. That there is a specific field that I am working for, and I really want to contribute to that. Definitely, <clears throat> definitely. Whatever you do, you should be like uh, feel proud of whatever you are doing. Correct. Nice, nice. Really uh, important. Nice thought too. So, uh, if I talk about Bosch, 
what is posh and why organizations should have uh, specified and strict policies for posh very uh, very uh, specific and a very interesting uh, question and topic right so posh you know definitely uh, it is about prevention of sexual harassment at the workplace yeah. so posh is about you know prevention prohibition and readdressal these are the three things that we do and uh, you know organizations i think it's extremely critical and important because it's one this is a law mandate this is right. not that you know somebody is telling you or a vendor is telling you that you need to do this is a law mandate so the supreme right. court says that you need to be you know compliant with that because this has a mandatory thing second i think it is also a safety for the organization that you are posh certified your employees are right. posh aware and you have done it for the employees so correct, it is also correct. a good thing for the organization that you are compliant tomorrow right. nobody will question you as to why you have not done it so that is very very important so for the organization i think this is one of the most important right so if i uh, asked you uh, posh like we have apprehension and uh, myths around posh that this is only for women safety so i want to know more on to it okay all right so i'll tell you jitendra uh, yeah what you said is absolutely right there are still apprehensions people are still confused i think people need to still uh, be aware and that's why i i say this is an awareness session posh right. is definitely not a training session This Correct. is an awareness that you need to know, and people need to understand that whether you have women employees or not, irrespective of the gender in your workplace, if your organization has more than ten regular employees, you are supposed to be having this posh awareness. Okay, It does so not require you to employ a female uh, worker into that uh, workplace, okay, okay, but as it. long as you know ten and more than ten. that is oh. very very important i have so also organization have, yeah. can have uh, 10 men all together and yes. still they need to implement posh yes and right. you also need to understand even though you might not have women employees depending on the organization or depending on the industry that you are correct But if correct. there is a woman for example you have invited a client and there is a woman in the client team then she is also your responsibility on the premises right if Unfortunately something happens god forbid then you the uh, employer is responsible for that now okay. if you yourself is not posh compliant how will you save or how will you save that woman you know uh, saying that you know what are her rights how will you actually do that correct because you have correct. not done it in your uh, workplace thinking that we don't have any women you right. might have a you might have a housekeeping staff mm. or you might have a contractual employee or somebody who's True. helping you out in a project Correct. or in a, or a client visit something mm -hmm. like that as long as the lady is in the workplace it, in that mm -hmm. premises it is the organization's responsibility to safeguard everything right and that is why it is very very critical correct correct got it so if i uh, talk about the legal requirements or implications what are the legal requirements or implications we need to understand around posh and what is the value it can offer to organizations so one is definitely there is a posh awareness from the for the employees then right. you have a team which is the internal complaints committee if something okay. happens then the employee can approach uh, the internal complaints committee the good right. thing about right. this is the law is pro women you know it will safeguard the women you know most in most of the cases right. however in an organization the law is applicable equally irrespective of the gender It could be a male employee. It could be a you know. It could be a female employee. It could be a third generation. It could be anybody in the organization. Yeah, yeah. So the law is equally applicable, and it it will impact everyone in the organization. Mm -hmm. That is one. Second, like you said, how will it help? It will help on the awareness. People will know about it, and there will be an awareness created. So you know, nobody will nobody will actually cross the limits because they are already aware on the impact right. and the implications. Right, right. Second. implications if you unfortunately if you are not a certified organization for posh there is a penalty which is attached to it okay. you need to register yourself so every state now i belong to telangana like like telangana there is every state where there mm -hmm. is a you know there is a website where you have to go and register yourself okay. your organization get registered and it will right. be noted in the state. and if you unfortunately don't do that then there is a penalty that is attached to it. Okay. under shops and establishment act there is a 
penalty attached to it because right. the law says you need to be aware of it. End of the day, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, every state has a. So I, I would not uh, mention any uh, specific websites for that because every state has a different one. But definitely right. they have. So that is the implication you need. To, mm-hmm. You know, you need to also think about that. So if you think that you know Porsche is a waste of time or waste of money or whatever, I would say no. This mm-hmm. is an awareness. This is a law mandate and an awareness, and it is also good for the employee and the employer both. Right, right, right. So that's my suggestion. Right. So implementing is really important, and uh, the yeah. Porsche policy is also uh, like uh, help employees to understand what is the right behavioral approach towards yes. co-workers and and, yeah. and customers okay. also. Correct. There will be there will be policies available. There is the internal com, uh, complaints committee that's available. There is also an external member, a legal expert like you know like me, or you mm-hmm. have a person from NGO, you have a psychologist, or you have a legal person who is also on the board of the organization who will mm-hmm. also intervene if required. So these kind of things. So right. it is very very important that you have this these things in place. Right. 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 so this is uh, really important and i uh, must uh, like uh, say every organization should have these policies framed yes. properly and uh, also they need to guide and educate all staff at across all levels not only the workforce but also the helping hands like uh, uh, security the people yes. who are uh, like taking care of cleaning and all they should also everyone. be aware of these things everyone everyone, everyone. absolutely Wonderful. So uh, now uh, I'd like to know more about you. Like, were you an introvert or an extrovert while uh, growing up, or uh, uh, how you like uh, face challenges of being uh, in touch with people, connecting with them, meeting them? Do you ever think that I would be an introvert? Uh, like talking to you till <laughs> now, I don't find that you would be uh, an introvert. No, no, I was. No. Uh, I. I... I think I was a born extrovert. I would. Uh, right. I don't know. But, uh, I remember uh, no, my mom calling me a chatterbox. Uh, but you know, I, I remember I'm, I I used to get remarks in my uh, school report card. Of course, yeah. I was a very good student. I was toppered, but then you know, it would always have a too much talkative. So I, I remember I used to talk a lot. I, I did. I did complain. I did yeah, complain yeah, to, <laughs> to yeah. your report good card. Student. So yeah, though the subjects would have excellent, very good, yeah. and all this stuff, but then this one used to be in quotes to my mom saying that she's too much talkative, need to control her, you know. Uh, you right. know, she she talks a lot. So I never spared even my teachers. I used to like go and bug them so much, and uh, I don't think I was ever. Uh, that, I don't know. I I was never quiet. I was never a quiet child. So I I grew up from a child to a teenager to an adult. Now getting old, but uh, you know, uh, I think I have been the same. Uh, I I I keep telling myself and I keep telling my people that you know I think I'm born this way and I'm going to die this way. So <laughs> the day the day you don't hear from me, so that day please understand that I'm I'm not around anymore <laughs> because I, as long as I'm there, I will keep on talking. Might possibly you are sick too. <laughs> so uh, now moving on to the next question, uh, if I talk about the support uh, you have in your life. who were the people supported you the most uh definitely i think for everyone it's uh, is the mom you know the first teacher uh so it yeah. is, it has been throughout my mother uh and i i'm very fortunate to be born into a family where i was raised like a human being not like a girl or not like a boy and there was no discrimination done okay uh, i right. was a single child for almost 14 years uh because i didn't have a sibling and uh, he came into the life only after 14 years so I, okay. i think i was very very fortunate to be raised in a way that they gave me every freedom and every platform as to what i wanted to do in life right. both my both my parents uh, of course my mother has a greater impact so she wanted to leave her dreams through me things okay. that she was unable to do, so she taught yeah. me uh then if i move on uh, unfortunately both my parents are not uh, around anymore okay uh, i need to hear that but uh, but yes my maternal aunt my mother's only sister mm-hmm. she has been my inspiration throughout even today um, right. actually she's my idol you know for you know whatever i have done mm-hmm. and of course you know as i move on uh, it's been 10 years of uh, married life and i think my husband 
because if he right. doesn't support then i don't think i can achieve anything in life right so right. i always uh, keep saying this whenever i talk to people you know that the statement of uh, there is a saying and a, and a generic statement that there is a there is a woman behind the success of every man but i would say behind this successful woman there is my man you know who always stands by me Right. Uh, in in all my professional and career achievements and i owe a lot to him because he gives me that opportunity that platform the space for me to do my things wonderful so i think he has a wonderful impact on my life right that support is really important from family yes. and family members yes so if i talk about inspiration and motivation in life who are uh, the people you get most of the inspiration and motivation when you have already mentioned i'd like to know more about other people um so i would not say that you know there are any uh okay one definitely you know i, I have learned a lot uh from mother teresa you know yeah. what i learned from her how she inspires me is doing things for people without an expectation you know it is like when you do something for somebody or when you give something to somebody you don't expect right. that, that the normal scenario is you know you expect you know that he will also give something to me in return but with that lady i think i learned that there is nothing in expectation yeah. she has only been given right throughout her life she has only been giving and she has not expected anything so that's what i learned from her uh the other person who has actually um inspired me i would say somebody who is not so famous or not so special but uh one of my bosses that i had learned in my life i've seen in my life right. uh, he was one of those guys you know who would always Who always would like to throw me in a fire, you know, you know, in a ball of fire, and I would like say, "What's wrong with you?" And then he would say that, you know, every time I throw you in fire, I know that if you start burning yourself and if it hurts you, you will definitely try to come out of it. Right, right, right. Okay. If I create everything for you, or if I create, you know, a wonderful, uh, lovely place for you, then I think the learning will be very limited. Right. And there were times I used to get very frustrated. I'm like, you know, I don't wa- want to work with this man. you know he is not at all helping me kind of a thing but there was a time that i realized that there is definitely a reason why he is doing that and when i actually look back i um, always found him standing there for me so you know, uh, i would say he is like one of the godfathers for me that i had uh, you know i had learned in my life uh, he is a very very normal simple humble man but he right. has inspired me to an extent that i learned a lot of things wonderful i had to do things on my own rather i would say that Mm-hmm. so without depending on others you know that is uh, so these are the two people in my life who have inspired me you know apart from the ones that are already mentioned right really uh, wonderful people you have in your life who like inspire you motivate you so amazing so if i uh, talk about your take uh, take on success what do you think success uh, should look like to you <laughs> very a uh, dicey question huh? uh success you know uh, i remember this uh, this quote from this movie three idiots i'm sure all of us have watched that movie and uh, he would say that right. uh, just just concentrate and focus on your hard work you know success will follow you any which ways so Correct. you know that one thing which has stuck in my uh, mind for a very very long time that just focus focus on your task focus on your work and once you've done and once you're able to do that i think success is something that is anyway automatically going to follow you You Correct. don't have to run behind success. Definitely, you will not even realize one day that you are successful because you only focused on the work. Correct. And people Correct. are talking about that success. So that's, I think, that's the success mantra that I have for myself, and that's what I want to tell people that let's just focus on getting our things done, and you know, just let's just focus on what we want to do in life, what we want Correct. to achieve in life. So once you achieve it, you are successful. That's it. It will follow. Correct. You. Definitely, whatever you do, you do it with your. Uh, art dedication passion yes. Yes. and all your energies this is really important yes. so uh, like uh, in last i'd like to know about uh, like few of the messages or advices you like to make to our audience one definitely i would like to say you know what i think uh, somewhere and, and over the last two years in this pandemic you know jitendra uh, and myself is a covid warrior i survived that uh, dangerous uh, phase you know where i thought i was dead and i think that's where i learned that your your mind you know your mindset your your thoughts your the, the positive energy that you have 
that's also yeah. is very very important in your life right you need to think that yes you can do it you need to think that yes you can achieve it and you need to think that yes i am the winner and i can do it right. trust me that worked like miracles for someone like me who is highly diabetic okay. uh, where the oxygen levels were almost 69.33 oh. and i thought i was dead and i survived that phase which definitely means that your positive mindset is one of the most important things in your life definitely and it can do wonders if i have to you know if i have to look at the generation you know uh, behind the youngsters or you know what right like growing up i think it's very very important that you change the way you look at life yeah at 20 and 25 you might feel that there's a lot of gyan coming to you but then that gyan has definitely has an impact on your life correct when you reach your really 20s and 30s Mm-hmm. and look back you definitely have to see that there is lot of learning from and these are all real experiences these are not stories correct and i'm sure every family has at least one or two people who have been impacted and affected with that deadly disease yes you no know, it was more like for me covid was more like mental and than physical definitely and it was uh, for everyone like whosoever yes. i have spoken Uh, after recovery they all were facing similar kind of challenges it was correct. more uh, towards like mental uh, correct compared to the physical one and losing your loved ones you know i, I lost my mother in law during this covid phase and you know losing your loved ones and you yourself going through it i think that's a big learning for anybody yeah it definitely. is also you know I, and i realized that it is just a positive mindset where you tell yourself that yes you can do it and you will win this situation yes. that's the greatest learning that i had ever had in the mm. last couple of years that i have seen myself right so that's my uh, message to people that you need to have a positive mindset right just forget about everything and just tell yourself that yes you can do it correct pick up yourself shrug everything stand in front of the mirror and say that you are the best and you will win today definitely no one in this world can defeat you and that's what i do because nobody is going to pat you every morning You need to pat yourself, and that's what I do. Yes. And I tell myself that you are the best in this world. Just move. True, true. Keep moving. That's it. Nobody is going to tell you and push you for that. You have to push yourself. Yes. And trust me, you will do it. Yes, definitely. These are really wonderful things. Until unless you pat yourself or you motivate yourself, you encourage yourself, it is difficult exactly. to find outside. Exactly. Right. Exactly. so uh, i must say uh, the discussion we had was really amazing and i was thinking that something more would be coming in so i was waiting for you to uh, continue further uh, <laughs> really amazing uh, insight you have shared about so many things and i really want to discuss further more i want to hear more from you again soon so thank you so thank much you. Uh, dr polomi for your time and uh, whatever knowledge and advices you have shared with us were really a uh, worth it and really interesting in uh, an important too i will also share your uh, social media links and websites so that people can be in touch with you take your help guidance wherever they feel like uh, so guys don't forget to check that out too and thank you everyone uh, for uh, watching and listening i hope you all must have gathered a lot of information and enjoyed watching it Uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe have a good time thank you and bye bye thank you bye bye